In this video, we're going to take a look at adding our own HDR skybox and applying post-processing to take our game to the next level. Check out the side-by-side -side comparison. It's incredible what you can do with just a little bit of knowledge with lighting in the post-processing stack. Let's check it out. Hey guys, John here with Game Dev HQ. If you're new to this channel, we create amazing game dev related tutorials every week because of our beautiful Plus and Pro members. Thanks for watching, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe for more. So here we are in Unity, and I've made a few changes. Right now, our platform manager, I've just increased this to six, and you can see here that I've kind of randomized it. I've made it one, two, three, two, three, two and we have this infinite runner effect. Now, in the previous video, we were using on became invisible, a method that's automatically called when an object becomes invisible to respawn and create the illusion of infinite platforms. I ran into issues with this and what was happening was that sometimes that method was called multiple times causing the Z offset to be called multiple times. So to fix this, I went into each platform and I actually added what's called a cleared platform box. It's just an empty box that lets me know, hey, I cleared this platform and now it's safe to spawn a new one. And I wanna wait maybe a second or two after I go through this. If we look at that script, you can see here that I'm no longer using on became invisible. Instead, I'm using on trigger exit. I've turned it into an IE numerator so that I can yield events. I'm checking if it's the player that collided with that platform or the end of the platform. I wait 1.5 seconds. And then here I recycle the parent object because the platform is now a child. So pretty simple. And then when I get to the end, it's just gonna wait 1.5 and then recycle the platform. So that's the only change in code that I've made. Let's take a look here at adding our HDR skybox. If we look inside the game dev HQ assets, we have an HDRI folder with an HDRI material. So let's take a look here at what a skybox is. By default, Unity provides us with this skybox. It's your environment. You can see here in the horizon, there's some lighting and some white and then a sky. That's a skybox. It's essentially a material that allows you to have a 360 degree image type. And what we can do is we can actually swap this out for something that's more realistic and we can actually pull lighting data from our skybox to get a more realistic vibe, kind of similar to what you saw in the beginning. So let's take a look here at adding our own skybox. If we go to window, rendering, lighting settings, you'll see here that the skybox material currently being used is set to default skybox. Let's drag in the HDRI skybox that we have from Filebase. By dragging that in, our scene is instantly going to update to use that skybox because our environment lighting is being pulled from the skybox. If I were to close the panel, you'll see here that we're actually in this city environment. You'll see here that we now have this beautiful city and we're getting all of the reflections and lighting data from this skybox. So if we actually run this, you'll see here that we're actually going to be within this environment and things are going to be lit that way as well. So just having this skybox, you can see that things are starting to look much more realistic and much more of the look and feel that we'd like for this game. What we can do now is we can actually take this a step further by applying the post-processing stack, which will continue manipulating the lighting data that's being pulled from this skybox. So let's check out how we can do that. In order to work with the post-processing stack, you have to have the post-processing package installed. We are using the lightweight render pipeline, so it's by default included in our project. However, if you don't have it, you can go to Window, Package Manager, locate the post-processing stack, and install it. But if you're using the SRP of Unity, the scriptable rendering pipeline, it's included. So what we can do here is I can select my main camera, and we can add what's called a post-process layer which is going to allow our camera to apply post-processing effects. Here it says main camera, it needs a layer. By default, you should have post-processing layer. If you don't, you can create the layer by going to layer in the top here and adding a new layer. So user layer eight should be post-processing. Select your main camera, select that layer, and then now we can read a volume. So what we need to do now is now that we have our camera set up to receive post-processing, we need to create a volume. 
So let's create an empty object by going to create empty or control shift N. Let's call this post processing volume. This is going to be a global volume. And in order for us to work with the post processing stack, we need to attach a post process volume. Is global means that we're going to affect the entire scene. And then here it's looking for a profile. So here I've downloaded from Filebase the post processing profile. I'm going to apply this and you'll see here that nothing's happened. The reason for that is because our layer has to be set to post processing. As soon as I do that, you'll see here that our lighting takes effect. Default, post processing. If you're new to the post processing stack, we have tutorials from Al on post processing in the Bloodborne series, as well as a video dedicated to post processing and showing you how easy it is to manipulate your environments. So now that we have post processing enabled, let's go ahead here and swap out our character. So here's our player and it's just a capsule. If we hop into Filebase, you can see here we have a mech and a prefab of the mech. Let's just drag him into the player. Make sure the position is set to zero, zero. And then here, if we select our player and focus in on it, we need to make sure that the capsule is going to wrap around our mech. So I'm going to turn off the renderer of our player and you'll see here that it needs to now be moved up. So our character collider, I'm just gonna move it along the Y so that it's around our character here. So about 0.89 and then we should be okay. I'm gonna save my scene, run the application and we should be good to go. You'll see here that we now have a realistic environment and things are looking pretty good. If I wanna adjust the camera angle, I can simply go to the main camera. Let's focus in on our subject and let's get the angle that we're looking for. So right about here over the shoulder. Control Shift F to align it and let's run this. And there we go. You can see here the post-processing effects are shining brightly off of our mech. And now we have our character running through this infinite environment and things look really nice. I can jump and in the next set of videos, we'll be getting into controlling animations, creating high scores and explosions throughout this environment. Thank you so much to all of our Plus and Professional members. You guys are the reason we create this amazing content every week. Special thanks to Holger, Jack B Game Dev, Laurie DK, Lucky Ducky 10, Matt Gamer, Mr. Amacostro, OJ Zach, Pixel Pup, Pico Dad, Six, Steamed Poet, and The Lost O3. You guys rock.